The New York Knicks lose their third straight game to the Miami Heat tonight, 109-99. We're here to talk about it with Brian Fonseca. Brian, how you doing, man? Great game. Um, Playoff-like atmosphere as expected, but the Knicks did come up short in a, in a tough one. Very tough, tough game. Well, Brian, I want to talk about what you saw from tonight. How did you sense? I know you say it was like a pl playoff atmosphere. You know, the Knicks, ultimately, it seems like they didn't get enough scoring besides, you know, your usual characters in Brunson, DiVincenzo. I mean, Deuce McBride played well tonight, but this has been a theme now for three straight games where the minutes that Brunson's off the court, they're just not getting enough from those other players. But what overall did you see from the game tonight with both the Knicks and the Heat? Still feels like a little too much patchwork as we're at this time of the year um the playoffs are literally in two weeks two and a half weeks and the knicks fighting for position now we can talk about this coming up in a couple minutes but there are a whole bunch of teams breathing down their neck in and around their area that two through eight three through eight in the eastern conference is a mess and i just think in this type of game against the Heat, who you know they're going to bring it defensively. I don't care who's out there for each team. It's going to be a close game regardless. Um, to me, the score, the final score doesn't indicate how close the game actually was. You have injuries on both sides, two significant ones for the Knicks, Julius Randle, OG Ananubi, still trying to overcome that. The Heat are missing Tyler Hero, also missing Josh Richardson, who was getting rotation minutes and closing for them at different points of the year. So two big losses on each side. And with the Knicks, it's like, can you survive this type of a contest offensively when two guys in your starting lineup are shooting three or fewer times? Isaiah Hartenstein and Josh Hart, two of my favorite role players in the league to watch because of what they do outside of scoring, the dirty work, lunch pail stuff, getting after it on the glass, creating place for others in terms of uh, passing and things of that nature. And defensively, the defensive versatility, especially in Josh Hart's case which you saw him doing a good job tonight on Jimmy Butler for the most part and also helping out cleaning up some other areas. But the issue is the Heat weren't trading him as an offensive threat. Right. And that's something that's pretty significant in terms of your playoff aspirations because if you can treat Josh Hart as if he's not an offensive threat and you know Tibbs is going to play him 46 minutes like he did tonight – if OG Ananubi isn't there, and specifically if Julius Randle isn't there, that's something that other teams can seize on, and that's something that can keep happening. If they do draw that 4-5 matchup against the Orlando Magic in round one of the playoffs, that's going to be something Orlando can do because they're great defensively. Like, they're young, and I think the Knicks would win that series. I think the Orlando Magic is going to lose to pretty much whoever they'll see. But they're going to be a problem because of what they can do defensively. Offensively is where they sort of struggle a bit. So the Knicks were able to, or well, the Heat rather, were able to execute a couple of different things that I think should be worrisome. Like if Jalen Brunson has an off night, you can't really survive it. If Josh Hart's not going to shoot, he didn't take a single three-pointer, you can't really survive it. And if Dante DiVincenzo and, and Deuce McBride have to overcompensate offensively, that means your offense isn't really clicking the way it should be, even though they did have very good performances and made timely buckets down the stretch. Right. If never felt like besides those two that the other guys weren't getting a rhythm. And to your point, Hart didn't even shoot the ball that much, only three shots tonight. Uh, you know, Isaiah Hartenstein wasn't much of a factor offensively tonight. You know, it, it, I mean, Bogdanovich was okay tonight. He gave you some points. But the Knicks, it felt like, again, it's just, it's a struggle offensively. And, they're, and, and I know it goes without saying, but they're missing Randall. They're missing Ananobi, guys who take the ball to the rim and can attack. And even, they'll give you some perimeter shots as well, but... The, it just feels like they're not being as aggressive because Brunson is taking the brunt of going to the rim and attacking. And he's always, you know, he'll get the foul call most of the time, unless you're Brian Windhorst calling him out saying he's a, you know, he's getting a foul hunter right there, which is crazy to me. But at the end of the day though, th this team, it just, for me, Brian, when I'm looking at them heading into, like you said, seven games left in the season, they're now slotted in that four or five spot right now, tied with the magic that three is is starting to slip away a little bit with these with this recent slide. How concerned are you with this Knicks team heading down the stretch here with seven games left, and we still don't have an answer of when and if Ananobi and Randall are going to come back to this team? That's really the concern is the injury portion of it because the reporting has gotten very murky, and the best reporters around the Knicks, it's they're basically saying like, hey, like there's not really a clear cut timetable here. 
Julius Randle, I thought, would have been playing by now. And it looks like, you know, they're like, could he even take contact at this point? He's not really practicing. There's not like any anything like that. Mitchell Robinson returning before him was not something that a lot of people expected. It wasn't and, on my bingo card, that's for sure. <laughs> right. And then OG Ananobi, it's lingering. And he's missed roughly 30 games each of three of the last four seasons. Like, this is sort of the question with him and why trading for him was not the easiest thing in the world league wide and why the contract situation with him is going to be fascinating to watch because he is due for an extension and the Knicks, I'm sure they're going to want to give him one. What that number is going to be is going to be very indicative of, I think how they feel about him and how they feel about the durability. Right. But those are the two biggest questions on this roster. And then on the flip side, you have, Terry Rozier coming through in an effort that wow. sort of, like he looked like Damian Lillard out there. And it's interesting to see because like if the Knicks play against the Bucks in round two of the playoffs, this is something that can hurt you because the backcourt defense is not really a problem. They've been able to figure out consistently now that they're shorthanded. OG Ananubi obviously being healthy uh, helps, but at the same time, Jalen Brunson, because of all he does offensively, these things could happen every now and again. Like Terry Rozier won the Heat this game when Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo didn't have great performances. Right. Like Jimmy Butler in particular, he wasn't really doing much in the fourth quarter at all. And Terry Rozier, in fact, outscored both of them. And the Knicks weren't able to steal that game because defensively, the Heat were able to force Jalen Brunson to a 5 of 18 performance that was actually worse in the first half. So I think there are a lot of things here that you can sort of take with you as it pertains to how this could look in the playoffs. These two teams could face each other in the first round of the playoffs. So I think some things may may stay with you going forward. Ultimately, when you look at this team, Brian, for the Knicks, I mean, they, the schedule is not easier for them coming up. I mean, Thursday night, they got to play the Kings. That's not an easy matchup for them, obviously. So, but offensively, we got to stick to this theme here a little bit. I mean, Brunson, he can do as much as he can. I mean, you saw what he did against the Spurs, dropping a 61 point perform, 62 point performance, and you're like, Oh my God, like what is going on? But they still lose that basketball game. And then the same thing happens against the Thunder. Brunson, again, late game heroics, hits that awesome shot at the end, doesn't get the foul call. But then Shea Gilgis Alexander hits the buzz, you know, the buzzer beater at the end, pretty much. So what can the Knicks do offensively to fix this a little bit? Because there is no guarantees Ananobi and Randall coming to help this squad. Who do they need more out of? Is it Bogdanovich? Is it Burks? They need to get more out of him. Is Mitchell Robinson this guy to get going? Or is it really come down to what you're saying of Josh Hart needs to be shooting the ball more and be more aggressive and getting being offensively a threat? I think it could be a combination of different things. But realistically, Deuce McBride is giving you what he can. Dante DiVincenzo is giving you what he can. And Jalen Brunson obviously has given you what he can. To me, this boils down to Boyan Bogdanovich and to a lesser degree, Josh Hart. Josh Hart, the reason why you love him is because he is a great role player who does all the other things but scoring at a high level, basically. And the scoring sort of comes and goes. Some nights he'll have, you know, 15, 18, whatever the case may be. Other times he'll have five, seven, and it is what it is. Boyan Bogdanovich is really the one for me because that trade has been a bust so far. Like, at granted, Quentin Grimes is out for the season, but... And that trade was able to clear the pathway for Deuce McBride to get more minutes. But Alec Burks hasn't given you much of anything. And Boyan Bogdanovich hasn't given you what he sort of paid to be. And to me, that trade was more so about looking into the future, right? Boyan Bogdanovich is a contract that you could then pivot and move this summer in a potentially bigger deal along with some other contracts, whatever. That's just business ramifications, right? But in terms of the basketball now, Boyan Bogdanovich was averaging about 10 points coming into this game since the trade, shooting about 40% from the field. He doesn't give you much of anything else but scoring, which is kind of my issue with him as a player mm -hmm. sometimes. Oh, the defense isn't really there. The rebounding is never there, despite the fact that he's a four for the most part. But the scoring has to be there consistently. He had some moments and did get some buckets late, did get some buckets in the second half. But he's really the guy who is not like maxing out his offensive ceiling, whereas everyone else is doing what they could. Boyan is the one that you need to lean into a little bit more and see what he can give you offensively because of all the guys who can give you more juice. He's the one that I think you need to see more out of compared to everybody else. We're going to see what happens as, it, as they head down the stretch here, Brian. We appreciate you just 
breaking down the Knicks right now. It's It's been a three-game slide. And like I said, I got the Kings on Thursday night. Appreciate you just giving us some time and breaking it down, man. Absolutely.